On the mound for the Royals this afternoon, right-hander Seth Lugo. He makes his fifth start of the season, and his first four have been outstanding. Four starts, four quality starts for Lugo, who enters with a 105 ERA in 25 and two-thirds innings. He has yielded just three total runs this season. 1-1 one, one pitch, squibber off the end of the bat to third. Garcia in the hole at shortstop to throw the first in time, and that's how the game begins. Grounded sharply, but right to Frazier. Two ground ball outs. Infielders and outfielders love playing behind Lugo. He's going to throw strikes. Ball's going to be in play, and this one is hit high in the air, right center field. Hampson playing in center, moving to his left, makes the play. That's the Baltimore story in the top of the first. To the bottom we go. Cole Irving making his fourth start of the year. ERA a little bit elevated, 14 and two-thirds, 11 strikeouts. Now the turn in the 0-2 pitch hits sharply on the ground, the right of the shortstop. Henderson gobbles it up, throws to first to open up the Royals' half of the first inning, sending Bobby Wood Jr. up to the plate. And he hits one hard and past the diving third baseman and up the left field line it goes. And Witt is on his way to second base. Now the ball boxed around in the corner, but finally Kowser recovers from the point where he can get a throw back in and keep Bobby Witt Jr. at second base. So the Royals have a runner with one away here in the first. Crowd ball from Pasquatino here, Henderson. Got rid of it as Witt takes third on the second out. Well, you better be careful here. Salvador Perez has had a monstrous series. Yeah, I know it's early in the ball game, but with two out and first base open, I would think really hard about pitching around this guy. Four fastballs all off the plate. That's about as intentional as an unintentional walk can be. Melendez mm -hmm. takes strike three right down the heart of the plate. And the Royals are not able to score despite a few base runners in the bottom half of the first inning. Nothing, nothing to any number two we go. One away for Ryan Mountcastle. Here's the payoff pitch. And it's off the hands over the left side of the mound, and it rolls into center. Not hit hard by Ryan Mountcastle, but it is still a base hit. The Orioles get a one-out single, and Cedric Mullins is going to come up to the plate now. Mountcastle's on the run, and Mullins pops it up. Short center field. Frazier's out there. The ball drops in, and Mountcastle is going to be out at second base. He was in no man's land right there, and he could not make it to second in time as Garrett Hampson, the center fielder, throws him out. Mullins is going to go. Good pitch to throw on, but Cedric maybe got the hand in there. He was called out, and that's the first caught stealing of the year for the Orioles as it stands. The Orioles are going to challenge. Remember, in the game on Friday night, the Orioles burned their challenge in the first inning. Now they're at risk of losing it in the second inning. Boy, Freddie for me, you can't throw one any better than this, and a very quick tag. After review, the call on the field stands. Runner is wow. out. Baltimore will lose their challenge. Brandon I can only shake his head. No score top three. Colton Kowser was at bat when Cedric Mullins got caught stealing at second base. Colton Kowser did something last night that's going to get him in kangaroo court. At the end of the game, he caught the final out of the game. And then, thinking nothing of it, he just, in his words, yeeted the ball into the fountains. As soon as Kowser yeeted the ball, he realized that ball might be kind of important. That was Craig Kimbrell's 422nd career save. He's now tied for seventh all-time with Billy Wagner. He ran up the tunnel on the third base side, found an usher by the fountains, and they were able to fish the ball out of the drink and make sure that Kimbrell got his souvenir. Kowser drives one out to right center field. Hit high, hit deep. Colton Kowser into the fountains. He threw one there last night. He hit one there today. Colton Kowser, that's the definition of yeeting a baseball, and it's 1-0 Baltimore. That was a bomb now. The wind didn't help that ball at all. And there's 216 stitches on a baseball, and I think Colton Kowser got every one of those. That was a bomb. Jordan Westberg on the next pitch. That's a tank out to left center. Westberg splashes down just in front of the fountains. And Kowser and Westberg go back to back in the third. Seth Lugo had not given up a home run this season. And now back to back jacks by the Orioles. 27 and two thirds innings without allowing a home run this year. And now he's allowed two home runs in a three pitch span. And the Orioles up two to nothing. Now the Orioles have hit almost three. Henderson goes into second base and Renfro made that close 
think the Orioles want to check and see if there was any fan interference. Now they have lost their challenge but this is a boundary call on a potential home run. So this technically would be a crew chief review. After review the call on the field is confirmed the ball is alive and in play. So it is in fact a double for Gunnar Henderson it hit off the railing but that is in play. Well that's now three balls in this inning that have been hit with an exit velocity of at least 109 miles an hour. Top five in Kansas City two nothing Baltimore. Here is Westberg to lead off for Baltimore here in the fifth inning. Westberg drills it into center field Hampson racing back he will not get there it's another two strike hit. Westberg is going to turn second. He's on his way to third. He is in there with the leadoff triple. Do it, Westy. Man, can he hit? This kid's amazing. And the Orioles immediately put a man at third base. And Seth Lugo with two down on that runner at third, and he's trying to pull a Houdini here and keep Westberg from scoring after tripling to start the inning. Pull it again to right field. Renfro makes a sliding catch. A nice play by a very good right fielder on a tricky play. And that ends the inning. What a job by Lugo. A leadoff triple, and Westberg does not score. As we go to the sixth, the Orioles up by 2 0 scored. The 1 1. O'Hearn clocks it high in the air, deep center field. Hampson races back, shields his eyes for the sun, still going, makes the catch over his shoulder. A nice grab by Garrett Hampson, and there's one away in the top of the sixth. Brings up Anthony Santander. Santander deep to right field. That ball is well tagged, and Renfro's not going to get to it. Anthony's got an eye for three. Santander is going to join Westberg in today's triple club. That's putting a charge in a fastball right there. Renfro going back, going back, and just over his glove. And watch this ball kind of kicks away from Renfro, and Santander realized right there, I've got to get to third base. And he does it. And again, the Orioles have a runner at third. And Mountcastle will bring him in. Left field, fair ball. Orioles get another run. Mountcastle on his way to second. Melendez's throw is late. Extra base hits on back to back pitches. And the Orioles kick up the fountains once again for a 3 0 lead. An RBI for Mountcastle, number 11. And now Ryan has six multi hit games in his last nine. And now Cedric Mullins with a ground ball to the right side. Great diving play by Frazier. He saved a run, but he could not save the hit. And Cedric is two for three. The pinch. Fastball high, and that's ball four. Not the worst outcome. It loads the bases with one out, and that's the end of the day for Seth Lugo. So Lugo exits without a quality start for the first time this year, and the Royals turn to their bullpen. Here's a 3-2. Westberg takes low ball four and Jordan Westberg walks in a run to make it four nothing. So Angel Serpa enters and walks the first batter he faces. And now the base is loaded with one out for Jackson Holiday. Right down the middle called strike three. A massive second out in the top of the sixth inning. Now the three two to Henderson. Right down the middle, called strike three. Henderson's down looking. Angel Serpa gets back to back backwards K's and strands the bases loaded. But not before the Royals yield two runs. Orioles four, Royals nothing. Bottom of the seventh at Kauffman Stadium, Cole Irvin has pitched six scoreless. He's allowed just four base hits. Another 3 2. Fermin left field. Kowser over to get it. And this is officially Cole Irvin's longest start as an Oriole. He gets the second out in the seventh. Well, Cole Irvin's going to leave on a high on this late April afternoon in Kansas City. Irvin will give up the baseball. Six and two thirds shutout innings. His longest and best start as an Oriole. Ninth inning coming up. Orioles four, Royals nothing in KC. So Henderson to first. And Adley Rutschman looking for his first hit today. Rutschman left side base hit Henderson was on the run he'll try to get to third and he will get to third who does that somebody that can really pick him up and put him down he just ran right in the face of Velasquez he never checked up head first he is one of the best base runners in baseball Ramona Rios grabs a bat he'll pitch it for Ryan O'Hearn and Ramon hits a ground ball that Bobby Witt can get to but cannot get to first in time. A base hit off the bench for Ramon Arias, and he makes it five to nothing. Bottom of the ninth coming up from Kansas City. Two and one for Isbell. Struck out his first time. 
And a ground ball to third base. Fielded by Westberg. His throw to first will beat Isbell and will cinch the first shutout of the season. 5-0. The Orioles win it. The game and the series in Kansas City.